Is this heaven? No, it's a podcast. Welcome to the Field of Geeks podcast. to episode 134 of the Field of Geeks podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Billy. I'm Billy as well. Welcome back, Bills. <laughs> the Billies. Yeah. Billy 1 and Billy 2. Yep. My favorite band. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got, got quite a lot to talk about today. Uh, also going to address some um, fans who've uh, wrote in about some uh, particular uh, topics. Uh, last time we didn't get to one of them, so I thought we could just go ahead and get started with that. Let's see, Jonah said, X-Men are going through a sizable reset in the Marvel comics right now. How would you want to see the mutants introduced into the movie universe? Any particular X-Men storyline you'd want to see brought to the big screen? The bad thing is that a lot of the crossover events between the mainstay Marvel characters and the X-Men, they've already kind of done. Mm -hmm. So like Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, stuff like that. Onslaught would be kind of a cool one, but that's like you know end of phase five pretty much like that's you have to have like everybody kind more of more characters established have to be introduced first yeah 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 that's that's a good point yeah they've kind of already did everything <laughs> without the x-men basically what, what about you billy what do you think i don't know i i don't sure if there's any point of bringing any kind of x-men thing back i mean look what they've done already yeah but, i mean it's i mean they, i guess they could have brought some back like like billy said in the you know the uh, avengers time frame you know because wolverine ended up being having an avenger at some point i think right and then mm -hmm. i think some of the other ones did too so i mean i guess they could have brought some of them in at some point and kind of have another standalone movie and then incorporate all that stuff together and then had a big battle with you know thanos at the end or something like that but i don't know i think they'll have to take some liberties with the uh, origin on them if they even yeah they probably don't even need to explore an origin that's the whole other thing like where were they during all this did the snap cause them to come to exist or mm. you know it's just going to be very interesting how they introduce that and we'll also get the uh fantastic four as well so it's that's very exciting yeah i think they'll do them right and i think that's what everyone's hoping for but yeah it's like where do you start kind of already explored all these other things and mm -hmm. you know if you go into the phoenix saga again which i don't think they're going to touch for a long long time no i, <laughs> I, I think that's a that's one saga they need to leave alone yeah um it, yeah I don't know. I I would like to see House of M. I'd like to see the MCU's take on that. What is that? I so House of M is like um, where Scarlet Witch basically changes the world to give everyone their heart's desire. Whoa. So basically, like mutants become the dominant okay species on Earth. Yeah. Uh, Magneto kind of kind of becomes like you know leader of the mutants. Sure. Charles Xavier's dead. Like, it, it integrates some of the other, like, MCU characters, like Spider-Man. Everyone knows his identity. Gwen Stacy's alive. Wow. You know, he's like a celebrity. J. Jonah Jameson's basically his bitch. So really? Wow. It, it's strange. actually kind of funny. Um, <laughs> is Magneto's character uh, still, like, on the bad side? Is he more of the... Um, more of the he... It kind of starts... Backable? It kind of starts out where he's a little more benevolent. And then towards the end, basically, in, in this entire thing, the only person that remembers anything from the way it was previously as Wolverine. And he kind of opens the whole lid on it. And then of course, Magneto at the end reveals his true colors and becomes psycho and kills everybody. And that's what kind of leads into the whole no more mutants. Oh, thing. Gotcha. that would require, you know, a lot of interaction between characters that are established in the MCU and, you know, bringing in like Quicksilver and Magneto. Which they and did, but, <laughs> Took him right out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They've had Quicksilver in two different kind of movies. They had Quicksilver mm -hmm. in the X Men universe. They had Quicksilver in the Avengers universe. Right. And I think they were limited in what they could do with him. Maybe that's why they killed him off so early. I don't know. But yeah, they. That was a weird time. You had two versions on the screen. So they couldn't. When they put him into Age of Ultron, when they put him and Scarlet Witch into Age of Ultron, they couldn't name him they couldn't call him quicksilver by name they couldn't True. reference them being mutants they were just you know enhanced by mm -hmm. loki's scepter or whatever 
Yeah, that'd be a little difficult to explain. Like, hey, Wanda, I'm your other brother from another universe. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how that would work. But That's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Unless the only way I can really see it working is if they do a Ultimates line, like an Ultimate Marvel kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like where there's, you know, the main MCU, like the 616 mm-hmm. MCU. And then there's an alternate one where everyone's kind of together at the beginning. And right. I don't know. Marvel is it's going really to weird. do a, a what if. I don't know that looks that looks really interesting. Yeah, is that um, like a movie you think? Or? It's um so it's going to be it. a animated series on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. Okay. Um so they've revealed at uh D, the D23 Expo, they um revealed a couple stills from it and it was what if I think the first one they're doing is what if Peggy Carter became Captain Britain? Wow. So like if she became the super soldier instead of Steve Rogers. Oh shoot. Yeah. So I don't know the the animation from it looks really good. Like the the character model looks exactly like the actress who played Peggy Carter. I take it she might be voicing the character. I that's the way it kind of seems. Is that yeah. the, that everyone's going to come back at least in a voice acting? That'd role. be cool. Yeah. So that'd be awesome. I'd I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, there's a lot they can do with that. But as far as uh, I don't know, I think. It would be nice to see the MCU's take on the X-Men and see what they can do with the characters and maybe flesh them out a little bit more than like Brian Singer could. As far as interacting them together, I don't really know how that's going to work. Well, you know, Singer, he left after X2, which just like, that was probably the, the peak right there. And then Days of Future Past, I thought he brought it right back. Like, he just oh, yeah. was in it. Yeah. Obviously, he's got some personal demons. Um, yeah, I did after- think it was funny that he kind of went back and like said, nope. X three didn't didn't happen at all. We're just gonna erase yeah, that movie. I was okay with that. I was. <laughs> I was upset with that movie. I it was it felt so short, and they killed like everybody. I yeah, like, exactly. I hate that. Every time they make a third movie, it seems like they just gotta take away. It started everything. off. It started off just fine. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I think anyway. But and then no, know, yeah, it did. It did. And then bringing some stuff. you know Jean Grey back, I thought. She would have been a little bit different, you know. And then, of course, the ending, you know, we all know how that ended. Like Cyclops, you know, being upset and then riding out to the lake. Yeah. It could have been great, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, he gets, he gets killed. It's like... The one thing I will say I hope that they do with it is that they make everyone a central character. Yeah, As opposed just to just focusing on Wolverine. Yeah. I because yeah. Hugh Jackman did an awesome job. He did. As Wolverine. He really did. He carried that character for however many years but he became the focus of every single x-men movie Mm -hmm. like even a you know even an x-men movie that had nothing to do with him he was like oh it's a cameo by wolverine (laughs) you know yeah uh, they probably figured they'd probably do it better with him doing the cameo in it so that's why the first class one was awesome it was brilliant yeah the first class one worked really well yeah that was um days of future past was really good i like that i really like that movie yeah um i I don't know. The it kind of went wrong with Apocalypse. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I didn't hate it. I mean, none of them have, have been as bad. I think as X three to me. You know, no stand. I X3 still think was, Apocalypse was better. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna compare like what the worst one was, I'd say it's probably X Men Origins. Yeah, yeah, that's really bad, isn't it? That that was a really the bad cartoon one. claws in the bathroom. You know, <laughs> yeah. some of it was cool, but. Yeah, it had its moments, but yeah, they totally like redone his whole transformation, and they didn't even try and cast Striker to look like Brian Cox. Like they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll just get this other guy. Who yeah. cares? And then yeah, he had Deadpool for the first time. Uh, oh, that's so disappointing. <laughs> but man, how rare is it for someone to play that part twice and get it right the second time? Yeah, exactly. They didn't make fun of the first time because they could do that with right. that character, break the fourth wall. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting how they uh, integrate the X-Men into this universe because it's, it's so much has happened already. Uh, they're coming late in the game, but... Well, you got to figure, too, like, you know, Wolverine was... he He's been a character that's been around since, like, the 1600s almost. I mean, yeah. he's been in, like, every major war. <laughs> he fought alongside Captain America in World War II. So you can't really, like... I that's a movie right there. I mean, you could go back. And bring yeah. that character to the forefront, and yeah, because like, uh, they, you know, I think Evans could still. I don't think he's aged too much. You know, no, he hasn't. Because I wanted more of the, the Howling Commandos. You know, like, oh yeah, the TV show Captain America was a lot older than Evans was. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd be really genius though if they they did like I don't know how they could do it, but if um, 
yeah, they brought like Logan to the forefront in that, and that kind of just lay, lays a seed, and then they're there in the background, perhaps. I mean, maybe they were already there, like, you know, the end game, we got to see um, Sorcerer Supreme. Is that right? Yeah, the ancient one. Yeah, ancient yeah. one. She was she was actually uh, helping out with the battle in New York. So yeah, we, did, we you had no idea about that the first time. So who knows? Up, upstate New York, the X Men weren't doing anything either. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to keep quiet. But then you got the whole mutant thing. You know, a clash of we don't want mutants. You don't have that in these films. There's no. There's really no problems with the. Uh, well, I guess Scarlet Witch had the had. There's an issue with her in Civil War. Yeah, they had to quarantine her. You know, from what she did, but. They don't well. They just don't have time to really go after the politics of <laughs> mm. how would people really feel about Iron Man and so right. on. They they did briefly in Iron Man two when he went to Congress, yeah, or Senate, and they wanted his armor. Basically, he's like, you can't have it. It's gonna be very interesting how they do this, but everyone's ready for it. They just just gotta do it right. Yeah. I think everyone's ready for a X Men series that is sustainable. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you look at the. Look at the MCU so far. They've been going strong for 10 plus years. They have so many rich storylines they've touched on. Mm-hmm. And the X-Men is no different. They have they have a really established history. It's just how are you going to integrate them with, you hard. know, one, characters that are dead, yeah. you know, or, or gone or have moved on and everything like that. But yeah, it would be interesting to see. Well, what made Scarlet Witch get her powers? Was it the Mind Stone? Is that right? What? Yeah. Um, it was because they, what's his name? Von, uh, Baron Von Strucker. Mm-hmm. He basically, they got the Hydra stole the scepter Yeah. at the end of event, basically the first Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. And they created Quicksilver and Squar- Scarlet Witch from that. So maybe they created the other X-Men from that, except they said that I, they're the only ones that survived the... Unless I, another professor was greedy and he kept it a secret. <laughs> it's just right. Like, <laughs> it's kind of a mess. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. Too many directions to go. Yeah. There's just so many characters. That's the other thing. But yeah. Because I'm sure we'll get another Avengers movie before the X-Men are put into the front. Or the... Well, they have, you know, Black Widow. Yeah. And they're, they're hers. Yeah. And I think that may be a prequel movie. Was there supposed to be a prequel? Yeah. Well, just uh, given it makes sense considering what happened. Right. When, Unless yeah. she was brought back, because the Hulk did say he tried. Yeah. Didn't. It's not like we didn't see her. It's not like a definite. Like I didn't bring her back, man. You know. So there's possibility there. I don't know. Just surprise us, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a long. Not, road not in a bad way, hopefully. No. Yeah, we'll have like colorful costumes. Like at the end of um, Apocalypse, those costumes were pretty damn cool. I thought they weren't mm-hmm. exactly like. You know, ones I like, but they reminded me a lot of the '90s X-Men. That's what I liked. Yeah, yeah. He had the chrome instead of like the yellow visor. Like those costumes look great. I was like, yeah, this looks amazing. And then I was like, watch the next film. They're like, nope, no, none of these costumes. You get like a little sweater with an X on it. Yep. <laughs> it's like, what the hell, people? Budget costs. I will say though, I didn't hate Dark Phoenix. I don't think it's the worst film. Obviously, it could have been a lot better. And yeah, again, they did waste time on the phoenix saga they probably shouldn't have even touched it just given the it's just a bad time you know disney was buying them up and it just it was a mess you had you had a guy directing for the first time ever yeah and it's kind of like um it's kind of like what fox did with the fantastic four movies where they knew the you know contract was coming up so they just kind of squeezed out a movie yeah you're right to keep the rights so it, it was very rushed for that big of a mm-hmm. storyline and the Josh Trank one, I don't think it was absolutely terrible. It had some good moments. I liked how they got their powers. It just felt like it was more, um, I don't know, there's more danger involved. The first, you know, that when they did the Fantastic Four early 2000s, it was just kind of like, oh, let's just take a trip to space. Oh, we got powers. And yeah, I just, I, the, it just, I like the, the horror side, I guess, of them. Like, you know, um, Johnny was like on fire, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a dead corpse. He's just burning to death. And, it was more serious, I guess, but but those movies did a lot better than the new one did. What the the other two did a lot better. Uh, oh, I know they did. The yeah, <laughs> they were more kid friendly. <laughs> the last one was there like was, very serious. Yeah. The prob the problem with the uh, the more recent Fantastic Four movie that they did was that the director and writer wanted to do a whole lot with that movie, right? And the studio came in and said, like, no, cut this out, put this in, and it uh, it just became. There was three major action 
sequences that were a part of the movie. And then I think once they started shooting, the studio took those away from them. Yeah. So then you're like, oh, that's our movie. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. we got to figure out what to do. It seems to be happening a lot lately with oh, uh, just... with these movies. And then all the good parts that you you know probably expect to see don't yeah. show up. And then the movie kind of tanks. Well, these execs, they just they want to make a name for themselves. And mm-hmm. a lot of them just don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, it's just about... No. It's just about power. Like, what do I have right now? You know, I can I can tell them no or yes, and I'm not gonna let the creators do it. I'm gonna butt in and screw things up. But then yeah. they lose money. Then yeah. they, then they just. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, we're gonna talk more about that pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more question we had on our on our page: Who is Batman's best friend? Uh, we had Joker, Alfred, and the Darkness for answers. I said Alfred. He said Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I went with Alfred. Made well. himself. Alfred. I don't know. Cause, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Alfred can't be around forever, so his. I think I said, uh, well, I just to myself, I think I thought Harvey Dent before he was Two Face. If you go back to the animated series, they're kind of buds. Right. They like have a double date, and then when Harvey goes through this whole transformation, Wayne's really concerned, and I don't know. Alfred, yeah, he serves him though. It's kind of. That's hey, buddy. Bud. Hey, bud. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, water, please. Of course, the new Alfred would tell him to go fuck himself. So. Probably. <laughs> right. The Jeremy Irons Alfred, I like him a lot more. I, he's like the most hands-on Alfred we ever got. Yeah. Probably won't get him back. There's talk Pierce Brosnan might be in the... Uh, I heard something the, about... The Batman the, movie. And the, ba- Matt, yeah. Re- the Matt Reeves Batman yeah. movie. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. I mean, he's... If he tones his Irish down a little bit and makes it more English, he, yeah. he did that in the first couple of Bonds anyway. He did so. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> I'd be all right for it, I guess. Yeah. Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Thanks for listening to Field of Geeks podcast. I'd like to remind you to please check us out on all social media and most streaming and download platforms. Fieldofgeeks.com. Back to the show. Speaking of Bond, uh, we got a title finally for the Daniel Craig's last film, which is going to come out in April 2020. No time to die. Hmm. Not bad. There's well, been worse. <laughs> yeah. True. It's not a Moonraker. <laughs> I'm an octopus person. So. Yeah. Oh, it's they could that. never do that, could they? <laughs> no. <laughs> the 40th anniversary of uh, uh, Octopus. Yeah. E. E. Yeah. Rated E. Like, I wonder, uh, don't say it. I wonder who thought about that back then, because I'm like, you look at that, and you're like, Octopus. I'm like, Octopus. Like, who the hell brought <laughs> They must have made a lot of money on that name. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of them thought it was like an adult film they're going to, probably. I like Daniel Craig. I'm just ready for him to be done. Because I just feel like he's just, he's like, yeah, I'm not really in this anymore. And I just want my Bond film to be fun again. I just yeah. think they've gotten so, like, they want to be born so badly. First attempts were fine. Like, Casino mm-hmm. Royale was a good mixture, I thought, of all of those elements. And Yeah. But it's like, I want to have fun. Like, you watch those new Mission Impossible films... It's like it's really fun, and they got a lot of character development, I think. And Tom Cruise is crazy; he does like every stunt. Yeah, <laughs> the Halo jump in the last one was just insane. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the whole Bond thing? Like the title's not bad. I'm just I'm just ready to be over this. Uh, I want a new new take on it. I think that the with the Daniel Craig Bond movies, they take themselves a little too seriously. Yeah, um, he's kind of. It's kind of like at the end of every single movie, he's like done, ready to be, you know, moving on with Bond. And then just all of a sudden, like before the credits roll, it's like, oh, no, I'm back. (laughs) And I don't know. I can't quit. (laughs) I would like to see it go back to I I love the cheesy Bond films, like the the over the top villains and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. I would like to see it kind of go back to something similar uh, rather than, like you said, trying to be Jason Bourne. Right. You know, doing parkour on, you know, cranes and <laughs> things like that. But Yeah. If you can give me a Casino Royale every time, I think I'd be okay with that. Although you did kind of forgive some of the way he was in that movie because he's mm-hmm. just starting out. But yeah, you get to his like third movie in, they're already calling him old. And it's like, yeah. what? He just started. What are you talking about? But yeah, no, I get it. I think... I think the cheesiness is good. I think you can ground it, though. Um, yeah. Perhaps. And... You just, don't you don't need to make it sixties camp no, by any by no, any means. No, but no. you can you can make it a little more fun. You can make it a little less serious. Yeah, there's some great uh, Bond films, for example, is uh Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which mm-hmm. that, that was George uh, Lazenbean. That was just one time there he, he was Bond and 
Living Daylights, uh, Goldeneye. I love Goldeneye. I think that's that was the first Bond movie I saw in the theater. Yeah. Just balance that. Tomorrow Never Dies, that one kind of doesn't age well. It, it was good, but that got you really close to the more cheesy villain. Yeah. You know? I think they could definitely do that without. And the whole, the whole um, Blofeld, that was just weak to me. Mm-hmm. He got him on that dentist chair, and he like drilled a hole in his head. It just was like, what? The, what is this? It's yeah. just stupid. And then they walk out of the facility, and then a huge explosion. And there's not even like they're not even running from it, right? And it it made the Guinness Book of World Records, I guess, biggest explosion. But it's like you kind of want to amp that up, man. But I think Craig hurt himself because he insists he does his own stunts, which is not a good idea, I don't think. Um, hmm. So I think he had Dave Bautista just throw him across the train, and he, like, broke something. <laughs> oh, jeez. Which, Dave Bautista was a good throwback, you know, henchman, I thought. Yeah. I liked I liked Absolutely. What, he could still be alive, let's say. Uh, yeah. That was a good build-up, but I just didn't like the whole... I don't like everything's related to Bond. That, that to me, annoys me. Like, yeah. Spectre should be its own thing, and Bond's just, you know, in their way. He's not, like, the foster brother to the, the guy who's running the show, you know? I yeah. Just, all that seems stupid. And he orchestrated all these villains for him to defeat. And it's just like... I, I think they wanted to, with this current series of Bond that they're doing, I think they wanted to kind of tie all of them together. Mm-hmm. Whereas you look at the previous Bond films and they're all kind of like standalone films. Right. For, you know... They're not really some, symbolized. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a serialized kind of villain of the week kind of thing, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah. You know. So I think that actually worked better when they did it that way, but we'll see, I guess. Well, you know, this, uh, I can honestly kind of see this being the last Daniel Craig Bond movie, hopefully. I think it is. I think he's definitely done after this because he was, he was pretty much done after the last one, but I think he wanted to go out on a higher note, maybe. I'm yeah. Guessing. And they probably paid him a lot of money. So. <laughs> I don't know. Um. I just wanted to be fun again. And maybe this one will be. I, I mean, I'll be there either way. But The thing I missed about them is the, the like, over-the-top gadgets. Yeah. I mean, they kind of got into that a little bit. You know, they brought in Q and mm-hmm. everything like that. But, yeah, I, I want to see some more, like, cool techie stuff. Not you need just the elements this. of Bond to make it a good Bond film. And you don't always have to overpower it with those elements. But just yeah. to have something, like a fingerprint scanner... A lot of people have had the idea of like, what if they take them back to the '60s? Because you get you get rid of the whole cell phone thing, and mm-hmm. it's like all back to old school. That would be cool. Be a high budget though. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Did you ever see the Man from Uncle, the movie version of the I, TV show? It's really I good. Have not, but they they bring it back to the '60s, and it's cool because they're limited. They you know you can't call everybody for help, and yeah, they have to kind of think outside the box. But yeah, we'll see uh, about this film. But yeah, like I said, I'm pretty much ready for them to just. Start fresh with someone new, someone younger, and uh, I don't know, just uh, hopefully there won't be another writer's strike. I think that's what disrupted Craig's career, because, yeah. uh, what was it, uh, the second one he did, um, Quantum of Solace, like, he he himself was writing some scenes, mm-hmm. so they get the movie done. That, that's how bad it, the strike affected them, but yeah. bad news for Billy and <laughs> other people, uh, Krypton has been canceled. No, I, I thought the show was pretty good, but... Uh, the first season I thought was all right, and then yeah. I haven't really gotten to the second season yet, but... This, it's your fault. I, I'm sorry, you know? They're waiting for you to tune in. <laughs> I mean, I watched some scenes with, you know, with Lobo, and they, you know, with Brain- Brainiac was pretty good. Yeah. Lobo was kind of eh, but you gotta be careful, and I told you before when the thing started, you gotta be careful what you do, because if you don't do enough, it's gonna tank. If you do way too much, you're gonna run out of storyline. So it's yeah. another Gotham, basically, except Gotham are like, all right, let's just go with Batman stuff. Uh, but this one, they were like, we can't really go Superman stuff because this is his grandfather. And right. We, so we can give you the cape. But so uh, I guess in this case, Superman never be born. Because well, I don't think a lot of people realize, like, <laughs> just because you're from Krypton doesn't mean you have those powers on Krypton. Right. No, it's the, yellow, it's the yellow son of Earth that yeah. gave Superman his <laughs> right. powers. I think they forget that once they start going like, oh, shit, what else are we going to do? Um, hmm. But I do think he got powers this season. I don't know yeah. how. And that's what I'm telling you. They, yeah, you're right. They ran out of ideas. Like, this is boring. He needs powers. It's like, how can we do this? I like you how know? they brought the characters in. I mean, they, yeah. they brought in the Zaz. They brought in, you know, Brainiac. They brought in Lobo and all type of stuff who would in turn be Superman's sure. enemies, blah, blah, blah. 
They should just focus they, more they, in a miniseries format, I think. Yeah. You know, just tell one story, yeah. you're done. Yeah. Just walk away. Yeah, there's only so much you can do, especially, you know, we have, you know, mm-hmm. 12, 13 episodes and it's not going very far. And then, you know, you bring in Sag L, who is, you know, Superman's uh, grandfather. Mm-hmm. And then Jor El's not even around yet. So. And he was banging his odd. That's hot. So, yeah. <laughs> So it's kind of funny. Is, is Superman really a Zod? You know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it ran out pretty quick. I mean, there's oh, so much you can ran do with that, and they just they, I think they did too much, and they you know they had all the special effects, which were pretty cool. Yeah. But it just ran out too quick, and unfortunately, I don't think if they were trying to shop for another uh, network, I don't think that it's gonna be be picked up. I mean, I can see Netflix. It, it should maybe, it should be more of a Netflix put show anyway, probably. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, they're gonna do a Lobo spinoff, and that's probably uh, not a good idea. Doomsday was in this season, yeah, which so you look pretty cool, yeah. Um, I think that was one of the season one cliffhangers moments that showed him right. in like captivity, and he mm-hmm. was like, "It's a good origin for the characters mm-hmm. in a way." But again, they just did too much at once, and it just just ran out. So. Didn't have enough story, really. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever catch Krypton? I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, but. I don't know. That that's kind of the problem that I see with a lot of what DC does is that they try to push the envelope too far too quick. Mm-hmm. I know you I understand you've got to keep that interest and everything like that. It's kind of like what they did with Gotham like they they brought in like almost every main Batman villain. <laughs> yeah. Somehow into the story like you're kidding me. These guys are, you know, in their prime when Bruce is a teenager. <laughs> yeah. So right. when he becomes Batman in his prime, are they going to be in their sixties? Like are you going to see Mister Fe- Freeze with a you know walker or right, something? Right. Like, what, That's a good point. There? Like Batman's like, I took them out. Like yeah, they're all like senile old yeah, men. They're, they're like, old no wonder. <laughs> you broke Joker's hip. Congratulations. Yeah. How'd <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you defeat him? A water puddle. Well, I mean, the <laughs> characters in the original Batman show were pretty old in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. According to well, know. they ramped up Batman in Gotham too. Like he started training when he was like twelve. Yeah. Right. And then they do a time jump at the end of the series. Like I, I get it's like an Elseworlds tale, but they started out trying to make like focusing on kind of like a gangster show, you know, yeah. uh, and it was intriguing, you know. Which I will say, I really do like Gotham. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at it as not a a scene for scene remake of Batman and more of like a, you know, like you said, like an Elseworlds yeah. kind of thing. Um, it works out really well. I'm, I don't glad, know. I'm glad they ended it the way they did, though. I mean, as far as, I mean, yeah, they're able to put someone in a suit that wasn't CGI. And then, I mean, they're able to finish out uh, mm-hmm. on a high note instead of, you know, dragging it out. Because I think they probably could tell, you know, okay, we need to, you know, we probably need to end this. It was nice. It. To, yeah, it was nice to see a lot of villains come to the screen finally yeah. that yeah. you hadn't seen before. Man, he really uh, gave you a lot of uh, options with the Joker. <laughs> they, like, killed him off, brought him back. The guy they got to play him was pretty cool. Although they never really said he's the Joker. Mm-hmm. He was a twin, and then the twin guy was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like a soap opera. Well, there are a couple Jokers in a deck, so, I mean. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, did you write for the show? I have an idea. I should have. They're twins. They're twins. <laughs> Everything, everything's going to have a twin. Yeah, right. Yeah. An evil twin. Yeah, or a nice twin. Well, that's too bad. I hope Krypton. I didn't see the season two finale, so I don't I know if it ended well or if there's a big cliffhanger. I'd have to go back and watch it. There's probably a cliffhanger. So. Yeah. Well, of course, we're never going to know what it is. They've so. never really been able to get a Superman based TV series off the ground. It kind of seems to be cursed. Like they do well at first, and then mm-hmm. it kind of tapers off towards the end and becomes just ridiculous. Like that, you know, Lois and Clark, you know, back in the day was. How did that last? It was like a few years? Yeah. Um, that had a big cliffhanger too. I think Lois got pregnant or something. Yeah, there or was maybe like a, arrived or something. Yeah, there was a big cliffhanger at the end of that, and then all of a sudden it's canceled. You yeah, know, get the answer to it. You know, they had Smallville, which you know that's that a, ran eleven years, right? Yeah, but then uh, they started ten, ten years, ten years. But then they started to have to go. Go. He yeah. basically became everything but Superman. Right. Like the villains came and Lois Lane, and he didn't have the glasses on. Yeah, so she she would know it's him. And yeah. yeah, and then they they started like integrating all the like CW, yeah, DC heroes right. in it, and I don't know. I think as far as Superman's concerned, I'm not a huge fan of Superman. Mm-hmm. I I think it it works better Superman being a motion picture mm-hmm. 
character versus a TV series character. With just the things that Superman can do and the, you know, mm-hmm. effects that you need to incorporate into it. Right. Yeah. it. It works better if you have a bigger budget. I agree. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe Krypton will be saved. I don't know who, but <laughs> somebody maybe. Uh, Matrix 4. This was shocking. Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss, they're returning. Lena Wachowski will direct and write the movie. So it's to begin uh, late 2020. Very interesting. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne's not in there, so I wonder what's going on there. Maybe a late contract negotiations, or <laughs> or maybe they don't want him back. I don't know. Okay. It's interesting because Morpheus is like the one character that didn't die at the end of the third right. Matrix movie. So right. it'll be kind of different to see what they do with it. Unless there's like an afterlife in the Matrix, and that's where they're at. Right. But I don't know what the hell they're going to do. I don't know. It's it's kind of exciting, but I still love the first Matrix. I think it should just be a standalone. I didn't really like the follow-ups much. Yeah. Just over-bloated special I, effects. I will say the Animatrix was cool to watch. I like that one a lot, yeah. Which I think a lot of what they wanted to do in the Matrix worked out better as... I mean, it was pretty much like a live-action anime. Yeah. For the most part. Like, especially the, you know, the third one was just an over-the-top, yeah. you know, sky battle between Smith and Neo. Yeah, I agree. I think the the first Matrix, like, they could have left it alone at that. Because you understood everything, and then the second one comes along, and I'm like, what are we, werewolves and stuff? Like, what are we talking about? Like, yeah. it's just getting weird. I did play when when the Matrix was popular and everything like that. Like, they had a, a PlayStation game that came out. It was called Enter the Matrix. Yeah, I had that too. And yep. um, it was based on Ghost and Niobe, and kind of showed, like, their portion of the story, like, in between the second and the third film. And yeah, like, like you said, with like the werewolves and vampires and stuff like that, like, I think they had a a portion of it where they went and fought the Merovingians crew and the only way to kill them was to hit them in the heart with a wooden stake. And it was like, what are we even doing here? (laughs) Like the, the first one, it was, I really liked it. It was very dark city. Mm -hmm. It was, it was very like kind of neo-noir it was cool, you know, um, it had a lot of really cool ideas to it and everything. And by the time it was done, you were amped up and everybody loved it. And and then the second one and the third one came along and it was just like you understood, mind-numbing. You I, understood uh, everything at the end of the first one. And the second one and third one just gave you more questions. Especially with the uh, guy behind the scenes with all the monitors. and Yeah, the This has been done several and, times. Da, 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 da. I'm like, why in the... What? That, I, I'll be honest, I almost fell asleep during that whole scene. <laughs> that was really... That, that was went on way too long. That was a lot of dialogue. I was like, what? I don't know what the hell they're going to do for a four. Did you ever watch The Matrix? I can honestly tell you, I think I just made this up, that I am a Matrix virgin. I never really got into The Matrix. Just watch the first one. <laughs> and the Animatrix. I mean, you're good. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. The second and third one are kind of arbitrary. You don't yeah. really need to... Let's do more of what we did the first time. <laughs> right. They I mean, invented bullet time, which is I've great. Seen, I've seen some scenes, but I haven't really yeah. actually sat and actually watched. It, it was something. Like, when it first came out, I remember that teaser trailer. Not everybody knew what the hell it was. It was an experience, though. I remember that in the theater. Everyone was just, like, blown away. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was probably our Star Wars in a way. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I was obviously still making good money if they're, you know. All... Well, it, the franchise grossed $1.6 billion. Keanu Reeves, you know, he looks pretty good. He's he's in his 50s now. I don't know if they would make them older or they try to say they're the same age they were back then. Yeah. <laughs> kind of stretching it, I guess. Yeah. But. I, I don't know. I'd see it like maybe if they were preserved within the Matrix somehow yeah. or I, I don't know. I don't know how they can do, do it. That. Oh, it's got to be a good idea, hopefully. Not another Jupiter Ascending or... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. They have not made really any good movies since um, The Matrix, The Wachowskis. Yeah. I don't know what they've made. I, I know Jupiter Ascending was one, but yeah. Yikes. To no one's surprise, Joker, the standalone movie starring Walking Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips, will be rated R. I'm okay with that. I am very okay with that. I think what's... That means if it's rated R, that means it's not going to be like too cheesy and to like it's like a character study basically on a right. mentally ill person it's like taxi driver but it's joker yeah you know, it's it, interesting be... makeup though because you were used to seeing the joker with you know the either the cuts or the mm-hmm. um you know prosthetic yeah smile so this is going to be a little bit they brought it back to the war paint type of right. look that leto had without the scars right but then uh, or not leto ledger Leto was Leto embraced the whole access chemicals transformation thing, kind of like what yeah Jack Nicholson. Did. He didn't have a. I don't think he. 
He didn't have no. the like the forced grin nope. kind of thing. No. He just had the the ridiculous little yeah. hand tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. And the really weird looking teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there was a cool theory about that, though. It was Batman knocked all his teeth out. I'm like, I'm okay with that then. With so all then the he had like teeth. all silver teeth or metal teeth, something like that. Because like, after he killed Robin, right. Batman just like, boom. That movie would have been so much better if they didn't have a trailer company edit it. That's what they did. Yeah. It was just these those flashbacks were like, what the hell's going on? Joker was like, a, well, supposedly they filmed a lot of him as Joker. And they cut a lot of it. So what we got was probably just him trying to get his footing. Like, he was kind of like a gangster joker. Right. Like Again, a, you cut too much. Then 30s the, gangster, yeah. 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 Well, they gave David Ayer, the writer-director, like two weeks to come up with the film concept. It's like, that's just dumb. Like, why would you do that? Well, yeah. and unfortunately with Suicide Squad, I knew as soon as it cast Will Smith in it, <laughs> he was going to be the central focus of the movie yeah. for the most part. He did bring back old Will Smith, though. Yeah, yeah it, he did. It was actually entertaining, but yeah, I get it. Like, he had to say who they were and all that I'm shit. I'm honestly, like, that entire movie, I'm like, if there's not, you know, a Will Smith song at the end of the, credit, at the during <laughs> the credits, been. like, it's, they've missed the mark here, but... Um, he got Jaden Smith, that's what he did. Oh, so God. He, here's my son. <laughs> what I like the concept with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is that... Previous Jokers were created by, you know, a normal guy having a bad day, falling into a vat of chemicals and mm -hmm. becoming a psycho. This guy becomes a psycho because he's tired of society. Mm -hmm. How it's treating him. So and... it's kind of like, I'm really interested to see how they do that. Like you said, it's kind of, it kind of seems like more of a character study mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, it'll be a standalone film. Which I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because I don't see Joaquin doing... See, like, he was going to be Doctor Strange. There was talks. Ooh. And he would have... Even if he was great as that character, he wouldn't... I don't see him being a universe guy, like, multiple sequel dude. You know, unless no. he does... Unless he pulls a Depp and changes his ways, but... Yeah. He's very much a method actor, too. Mm -hmm. Like, he really pours himself into the role, so... I yeah, yeah, like, really skinny for this one, looks like. Yeah. Maybe once... Uh, Joker comes out because the Batman's not going to be done for a while. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wonder if by chance this does well, will they incorporate his? Well, he said that he, he may not be a, a sequel kind of guy, but maybe they could incorporate him into. The, it makes enough money, I guess. Into yeah. the, into the Batman. I mean, every Batman movie has pretty much had a almost a Joker in there of some sort. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, maybe it, yeah, it could work out. I mean, well, I mean, it's a standalone, so. Maybe Joker dies at the end of this one too. Who knows? I mean, if he that yeah. definitely put the right. mark on it. Like, yeah, there's not going to be any other films. Right. There's yeah. still there's still possibilities, I guess. Yeah. So it's something. Yeah, I know Warner Brothers have you know they've done a lot of misstepping, and they could have had something great. I think if they maybe stayed with Snyder or at least honored the original version of what they wanted to do. But this mm. one's different from what Marvel's doing. That's for sure. The Marvel's not doing a standalone right now, especially a dark standalone rated R film. Uh, yeah. I could have Oscar caliber, possibly. It'd be very interesting to see what the, the final product is. Because Thomas Wayne's going to be in it. And I think uh, there's a scene where he comes up to a kid. I think that's Bruce Wayne in the in the movie. So Well, because in the original Batman movie, uh, the Joker, quote, quote, was the one that killed his parents. So yeah. will that be he part might... of the beginning of the Batman in mm -hmm. a way? There's talk that they could be brothers. Like, he's a... Joker's a child out of wedlock between Thomas Wayne and his mom. Um, hmm. So maybe he's jealous of the fortune or the life he could have had. or uh, I don't know. That might piss a lot of people off. It probably that's will. It's interesting. Yeah. It is um, interesting. That's why they're so much like each other in the, in the movies. Because they're, they're both mad. And, mm -hmm. you know, so. that's, yeah. It's new ground, but I don't think... Yeah. I don't think it'll be... Hey, accepted. everybody has a twin. <laughs> <laughs> won't be accepted from the vast fan base. I mean, I guess as a one-off, it would be yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah. a cool idea. But no, we don't want it to be canon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's a there's a uh, scene in... Or a panel, I guess, in uh, The Killing Joke, where the Joker says, if I'm going to have an origin story, I prefer it to be multiple choice. Yeah. So... Uh, that's true. Yeah. You know, this could be how he started. This could be how he started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, point. you can go in really any direction mm -hmm. with the character. Sure. Um, as long as, you know, at the end, he's wearing clown makeup and he's psycho. Mm -hmm. You right. know, it's like you work backwards from that. You can do pretty much anything with the character. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, in, it's interesting. At first, I was a little bit 
skeptical about Joaquin Phoenix playing the Me role, too. but the Me too. the trailer honestly looks really sharp. Yeah, it does. It's I think a, it's, it's like gonna, an art piece of it's, a film. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. It's actually going to go to some film festivals too, so it's definitely not like a franchise movie, you know. Yeah, it's kind of hero. It's kind of like the Sundance version of the Joker. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now we had a little news story break this week. Uh, something about Spider Man. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, Sony and Marvel have broken up. The deal they had was honored. It ran its course, and they were renegotiating. So Disney, I think, were. They were originally getting like 5% of the first dollar gross of the films, and they had all merchandise rights. Well, they wanted Mm -hmm. 50-50 now, and Sony was like, no. (laughs) So they were like, bye-bye. So you you won't have Spider-Man in the MCU no longer, which sucks. It does. It it does. And yeah, we... uh, So that means we're going to get another Spider-Man in about five years. Under diff- uh, under different no, way. they're going to keep going. There's two there's two more films planned, at least. Uh, there was conflicting reports saying that um, Holland might have to do those films, but the director, John Watts, he did the standalone Spider-Man films with Holland. He's not signed on yet, so Holland's definitely not pleased. Supposedly, he unfriended Sony on uh, yeah. <laughs> Twitter. He, like, unfollowed him on Twitter or mm-hmm. something like They'd that. pissed off, too. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he had uh, five appearances, Civil War, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Infinity War, Endgame, and Far From Home. Well, he's just outlasted all the other ones. Well, and I think also Disney probably had confidence to negotiate this since, um, you know, uh, Far From Home is the largest grossing Sony film ever. Yeah. Beating out James Bond. So they had they have that. But also Sony has the Venom success and Into the Spider-Verse so they kind of both have some negotiating tools, you know, to get what they want. Yeah. But yeah, Sony so far is like, no deal. I don't know. I see both sides, honestly. I see Disney like, they're both, basically they're both measuring their dicks, you know? Like, yeah. We got this, we got that. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I, so, like a lot of people, when the news first broke, I, my first reaction was anger. Mm-hmm. Because Same. I am... I, I've been a Spider-Man fan since I was a kid. You know, I grew up on the comics. I'm a huge fan of the character. I love what Tom Holland's done with the role. Mm-hmm. And even Stan Lee said that Tom Holland was his favorite Spider-Man. He embodied the the age, the mannerisms, everything that he wanted in a Spider-Man. Right. My problem with Sony is that they've always... They've had a strong start with Spider-Man films. And then... The studio gets involved and they want too much mm-hmm. in the follow-up films. And then they just ruin it. And then, like Billy said, you know, five years later, we have another <laughs> another, a, another Spider-Man. Fresh start. I can see a lot of what Sony's kind of argument is here ultimately comes down to is money. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Disney, like, they can practically print their own money right now. Like, they've got, you know, they've got Fox. They've got Marvel. They've Ooh. got... Hulu, yeah. ESPN, um, Star probably. Wars, the Pixar movies, like a new trailer for a Pixar movie comes out and everyone loses their minds and then it, you <laughs> Toy know. Story 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it may happen. You never know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, you got to keep Tim Allen employed somehow. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, no Netflix stand-up special for you, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> he won't play the buzz for, for so long. <clears throat> Is gonna, He's is like, gonna... I'm back. You didn't even read the script. I know. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sleeping in my car out outside by the, <laughs> by the studio. Well, to be fair, though, it was like a Dodge Viper. It was a pretty nice car. But yeah. Not really comfortable for sleeping. True. But yeah. No, I get what you're saying, Disney. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah. It's, it's so funny how people who are, take uh, Disney's side, it's like, do you realize Disney's becoming a big monopoly? Like, they really are. Hate on. You can hate on Sony, too. I'm not saying they're great, but I think they have every right to be like, no, we're not going to do a 50-50. We own that character for the film franchise. And the other thing was Disney also wanted, I think they also wanted ownership of the other characters, like Venom, other mm-hmm. films they were doing. Venom was a big success. Yeah. Uh, didn't have a lot writing on it. And it, it was it was a pretty good film. It was, it it was, was, right. it was mixed, you know. Yeah. Studio yeah. involvement definitely was heavy in that one. And usually with studio involvement, the film suffers. Well, in this case, yes. it didn't. So that tells me Sony's going to even be more involved with the sequel which I don't think is going to be a good be, idea. Be careful with that. Yeah. Yeah. They are, I mean, they have been having financial trouble. 
they needed all this success, and luck- luckily they got it, but Marvel did help them with the Spider-Man, because they were pretty much... After Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I didn't think was terrible, I wanted them to just move on. Like, just make make the other ones, learn from your lessons, but they're like, we gotta reboot everything, and then that was more acceptable yeah. with the MCU, you know, sharing him with that. I see both sides, but again, Disney's so damn powerful, like, I wouldn't be like, oh, poor Disney, they didn't... <laughs> No, yeah, agree with you know, too. it's like yeah, I want to, I want him part of the MCU. But if I was Sony and I own that character, and all of a sudden Disney wanted half when our company needs the money and we have the the ownership rights, sorry, I'm not going to deal. Like that's just because Disney has money. Yeah. yeah, they. And in a way too, it's kind of, it's almost like, I mean, you you look at it from both sides, but mm-hmm. it's almost like Sony's saying, "Oh wow, Spider Man can be successful. Now we want him back." Yeah. So then, if they if it tanks, then. They're, like, they're, okay. they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> want to sell them off to you know Disney or whoever yeah. again, and yeah. then sell them to WB. He can do some crossovers. Kevin Feige be like new phone who this. <laughs> so <laughs> they had the idea that they're gonna do all this great stuff with Spider Man or whoever character that they're gonna work with, and then like you said, if they're gonna do more studio involvement, <clears throat> that's gonna that's gonna make or break the movie right there. Yeah, because so. the new Spider Man films, you really can't do. Unfortunately, with the Holland Holland ones, there's a lot of MCU tie-ins with his films, so you yeah. gonna, you can lose all, all that, that now. Yeah. That's that's what really bothers me with it is that they spent five films building up Tom Holland Spider Man to mm-hmm. be the next kind of the next Iron Man, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of like pass the torch from Tony Stark to Peter Parker, right? And he's gone through so much in the MCU films, and then just to like say, nope, never happened. That's kind of a. Well, can you even honor what happened to him at the last film at the end, the big cliffhanger of that? Yeah. I mean, can you honor that? Can you dance around that? I, I just. Uh... I I don't know. There's. I don't know how this is going to work now, but there was like talk of. There was like a, a fan theory of like he was going to go to Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange was going to. Yeah. Wave his hands and. Which I'd be cool everyone's with. Everyone's going to forget. Yeah. Can't do that now. But the the thing with the Sony films is that they've got, you know, they've got a Venom standalone film. They've got a Morbius standalone film coming out. They, they're they making these standalone films of some of his greatest enemies and some of, the, like, the coolest characters that he's had in, in the comics. Right. And as much as I would love to see the, you know, symbiote saga mm-hmm. kind of play out in the MCU, I could take it either way, like, I want to see Tom Holland carry this character right. forward. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see it rebooted with, you know, whoever, Justin yeah. Bieber, <laughs> oh, God, five no. years from now. But <laughs> well, he'll do the soundtrack, so that'd be a Girl. plus. Right? Oh, God. No, um, just, oh, my God, I know. It It, it really sucks, but I, I do understand where Sony's coming from. I, I was upset with them for wanting to do Venom. It was like, oh, Marvel, you play with their toys so well. We could probably play with their toys too. We got some ideas, and then yeah, and I think that's what's happening. I think they're starting to get their confidence because of the box office, but they might not have the best strategy. Clearly, I think they don't like Kevin Feige does. Uh, they're also saying like Kevin couldn't really produce anyway because they have the new X Men to worry about and all the other franchises they've absorbed with Fox. But it's basically bullshit, you know. They're trying I to. I don't really think he needs to be involved so much anymore. No. I mean, he's he's been so involved with. You know, the with phase one through phase three already. Right. And that's already established. He's already kind of set in motion like, this is what I want you guys to do. You know, part of leadership is teaching people mm-hmm. what you want them, what you expect of them, and then letting them do it. Right. So I don't think he necessarily needs to be involved, but do I want to see Sony just take the character and run with it like they've done with the with Andrew Garfield and with Tobey <laughs> Maguire? No. Not now, I don't. I think they've had they've had plenty of time to do it on their own, and I just think it's it's really not a good idea. I honestly thought they were going to finish out a trilogy of films of Spider Man, and then they'd be done with the MCU. I didn't know that they were already coming to the end of the deal. I was like, that yeah. really sucks because I thought, oh great, we're going to finally have a full uh, vision plan, you know, for a trilogy. Now Sony's got to sidestep and figure out. We we have to alter things like looks of things. Uh, it's going to be really intriguing. Like, yeah, maybe they could do the Doctor Strange route, but he he can't refer to Doctor Strange. You can just say, yeah, I I went to the doctor and he he fixed my problem. You know, some <laughs> stupid thing like that. Right. I don't know this. I'm really 
honestly, I'm hoping it's just like a, a bargaining thing. And even though uh, with the D23 that just came up, I think Feige and Holland both said that they were out of the MCU. I think there still could be a chance this could work out. Uh, just given if you look, if you go back to the negotiations, like Michael Keaton originally negotiated to be the vulture and that fell through and it was like maybe a few weeks later and then he was signed on so mm. i'm hoping same supposedly disney had a better deal than the 50 50 before but sony denied it and so i think they just like screw you we're just gonna jack it up to 50 50 yeah i mean I, that is a big increase so i do i do get that but that that is a huge in- increase when you think of you know they're five to ten percent versus fifty percent yeah but then they get a hundred percent of the merchandising Anywhere you go right now, you can see, you know, Avengers stuff everywhere. You yeah. see Spider-Man stuff everywhere. It's yeah. Like, I honestly don't think Disney needs more money. No. To be fair, but no, I don't either. I think I think it's I think it's kind of silly for people to root for Disney right now. It's like you realize they're becoming like multi-powerful, <laughs> and to go into this, uh, what you know, the D twenty three thing. They've talked about their uh, Disney Plus service, which is great, but supposedly they're going to do away with physical media and it's all going to be on the service itself which yeah. is great with an you know ideally that's great but you can't watch that movie anytime if your internet's down or you know in any other circumstances i could easily see them you know how you, they used to do the vault thing which i always hated oh, i'm gonna go yeah. back to the vault yeah the I, could, vault. I could definitely see them like oh the vault's closing <clears throat> on this price range if you want to get back into the vault you're gonna have to pay an extra three bucks a month or whatever right. and people are gonna have to do it because they don't have the physical copy anymore so you know it's like ah i think they're really uh becoming a superpower <laughs> you know they are a superpower let's say but it's too bad disney will be fine uh sony probably not so much unless it's successful like if venom if venom would have bombed uh, we still have to wait for this Morbius one. See how that comes out. Um, Jared Leto's playing Morbius, mm-hmm. too. So <laughs> he's actually biting people. He's that method about knocking. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he did some crazy shit in Suicide Squad. He like he did sent like used condoms or something. Like yeah, he like put a shit. put a pig corpse in somebody's trailer and I don't know did something. He's on an Oscar high. Like I can do anything I want. <laughs> But this Disney Plus, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get it just for the, uh, the Mandalorian trailer alone. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sold. That looks amazing. Like it looks like, I don't know what your thoughts on the new Star Wars is. I, I see a lot of, I see hits and misses, you know, and yeah, um, yeah, I think this one actually looks like it's going to capture what everyone wanted and has been wanting for a long time. It's building the universe mm-hmm. more. It's between uh, uh, Return of the Jedi and uh, uh, Force Awakens. This takes place. Mm-hmm. So they, they also have other uh, Star Wars series in play. The Obi, they have that Obi-Wan series that Joe yeah. McGregor is going to come back for. That's exciting. They that got the scripts good. already written. So that's, that's yeah. really good. So they can just shoot that thing. And, and supposedly, I think that's, um, what is it? That's taking place after Solo. I assume so. Yeah. I think is what I heard on it. Because mm-hmm. uh, they somehow want to integrate Darth Maul into that too. Oh, which... yeah. Eh. You know, they did that in the cartoon or the. Rebels cartoon, I think. Yeah. Which, yeah, okay. Um, I'm for actually that's pretty good because yeah, he he's the one that cut his legs off. So yeah, they teased it in Solo. They might as well, you know, bring him back. Good idea. I think that'd be really cool. I think with uh, with Disney Plus though, if they do a, here's my plan, is that if they do like a you know 30 day free trial, two week free trial, whatever, I'm gonna take that time off of work. I'm gonna binge watch everything. Then I'm gonna cancel my free trial and stick with Netflix. <laughs> Um, but no, I, That's smart. I don't know. It's, I think we're more and more going towards these streaming services now, um, versus, you know, like back in the day it was, you know, cable programming. It was like, oh, you can, you know, get this package and you mm-hmm. get HBO and stars and Cinemax right. and. <sighs> Cause yeah, with Disney, it's seven ninety nine a month just for that service. But if you want the triple service bundle, that's 13, it's, uh, you get like ESPN, Hulu and uh, National Geographic. So there you go. Mm-hmm. If you're a sports guy, I'm not, but luckily, um, I think we had Disney Plus at one time. I, I, we've, we've well, it hasn't some, launched we, we, yet. Oh, okay. So maybe it's something different then. No, okay. it's something. Yeah, it's not launching until November 12th, I believe. So like I, Disney Now or something. Like no, Disney that. Now. Yeah, That's what it was. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've had a lot of other plans, but yeah, this is going to be its first streaming service, and the Mandalorian will premiere on uh, November 12th with the service, I believe. So. 
Also, a lot of Marvel TVs coming as well. We got Moon Knight. I don't know too much about that character. Kit Harrington, I think, from Game of Thrones. He's going to be playing him. He's actually going to be playing uh, the Black Knight. Oh, is he playing the Black in the Knight? Is that Eternal in the Moonlight? series? In the uh, what series? He's in. So they've got an Eternal series oh, coming right. out. Oh, right. Yep. And he's uh, he's part of that. Oh, okay. okay. So he's going to be playing the Black Knight in that. No, <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, honestly, Moon Knight. Look, he's one of those characters that's kind of like Daredevil. He does a lot of like street level kind of. He's almost like a, like a Marvel's Nightwing. Okay. In a way. Sure. Sure. So yeah, that that might be interesting to see. Like you said, I I don't know much about the character. Yeah. I never really followed Moon Knight. He looks cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got I just a cool wish costume. They would have uh, honored the Netflix shows as canon because man, Daredevil really did a good job. I thought and Punisher. I didn't see the second season of Punisher, but that was great. And Jessica Jones, all of them were pretty good actually. Yeah. Um, they're more grounded. They weren't so grandiose like the mm-hmm. you know MCU movies were. I, I think that's what these shows will probably will be. It's more MCU showing off and stuff. They have Miss Marvel and She Hulk premiered in 1980. She her name is Jennifer Walters and she's Bruce Banner's cousin and she gets a blood transfusion from Bruce when she's shot. So that's a good idea. You know what could go wrong there. <laughs> so yeah, she's small green Hulk basically. So. You just got a painter for the show, so yeah. there's not too much budget there. <laughs> not to make a big, maybe some, Bruce some paint, will, some paint and a wig. Bruce might cameo, maybe I don't know. Oh shoot, yeah, yeah. would it be Bruce from Endgame, or would it be would would Bruce go back to being Bruce? <laughs> uh, Endgame, yeah. yeah, that Bruce was really weird. that was fun. He, he's like a tall green Clark Kent. Yeah, <laughs> I liked him though. I liked that character, and I thought they did a really good job with the special effects. Like I don't think they could do that ten years ago. Like yeah. it just was, it looked pretty good i thought um, i would say so I everyone's mean, bitching about his arm i'm like you know what he just exposes the gamma rays and it'll heal up like, yeah i'm sure that he's gonna be fine well we know it probably like, wouldn't be mark ruffalo anyway because it didn't he get fired anyway or didn't did, ruffalo yeah did no. he get fired or so, something so. happened uh to where he leaked something out and someone oh the company got pissed off no nah, he probably fired. just slapped his hand oh, okay. it was like the right in a rock premiere his phone yeah, that's what it was. He left his phone on somehow it was you could hear i think you could hear the movie you couldn't see uh, it but okay. yeah. yeah and they like tracked him down and i gotcha okay shot his phone i don't know what they did. <laughs> disney has their own secret service oh jeez, you know they do um they can afford it they got a lot of great programming coming out Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. They released a poster with uh, the Emperor looking down on Rain, Kylo facing off. I guess I'm okay with the Emperor coming back. It just feels really forced and rushed. Like he wasn't a presence in the other films. Yeah, I didn't um, think he was. They've kind of touched on this, like the the Timothy Zahn books. Yeah, kind of touched on it with the I, I forget what the series is called now, but it like introduced uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn and. Everybody like that, you know. It, it kind of yeah. like, it kind of took it from, you know, it, before any of these movies came out, it it took it from Return of the Jedi on, mm-hmm. and kind of showed like what the sure. Empire's doing and stuff like that. And there actually is a part where they go back to Endor, and they fly through like where the the Death Star, the Death Star exploded. Yeah, and like Leia can feel his presence still. Really? Yeah. That's like intriguing. she kind of she kind of like influences him. She in the books though she's more of like actually training to become a Jedi, not just like sure. some background senator yeah. kind of thing. But um, I don't know. I I think they. I really hope they answer a lot of questions mm-hmm. with this movie. Um, that's a, that's the thing. Like, there's so much to take in, not just from the last film to where they want to go with that and then you're bringing in the emperor because i don't think that was the plan the whole time i think uh, i think jj set it up and then ryan uh johnson i think that's his name came in and yeah basically like <laughs> that was uh, that's I what like I... aspects of last jedi you know what it, for people who bitched about the force awakens was like a rehash last jedi at least was something new but yeah a lot of it didn't make sense like it was whole... something new but yet they took like all the questions that force awaken po- yeah, post and it's like, up. nope your your family was a bunch of drunks that sold you for for beer money. You and know, then Abrams comes back. He's like, actually, they were these. Actually, people. this is what happened. <laughs> so I think she's yeah. a Skywalker clone. I think that's what Rise of Skywalker means. I think she actually that would prove why Luke didn't acknowledge her like she's my daughter because he didn't even know she was his clone. You know, because yeah. they have that. They always go back to the hand with the lightsaber, like. That could be the source of this. Who knows? I don't know. It's what's her name? The 
um, little shrimpy lady that runs the ET creature bounty bar. Yeah, in, in Force Awakens, she's like, "Oh, that's a story for another time." So maybe yeah, there's just so much setup, and I was I was there, but Last Jedi just the whole Canto Bite scene was stupid. I thought, why would you if you could leave and go there? Couldn't you just bring some ships back and get everyone off? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like just felt stupid. Just yeah, it did. And the Empire, or what, what do they call themselves now? The new the First Order, whatever. Yeah, they could have just sped up their ships and shot them, killed them. They're yeah, just, let's just have fun with them. Like, okay. And now we have now we talk about fuel in these movies. Like we've shown they've shown the X wings getting fueled up, but they never really went into like. Oh, you can. You only have a certain amount of fuel for this trip or whatever, because you know, like Luke would go to Yoda and back, and there's never. Yeah, he never stopped at a gas station. Or <laughs> <laughs> it was like a Philip sixty six in space. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, um, I mean, I hope it ends well. I think they they might keep going, but it's going to be a different type of storytelling. Yeah, I I can see them more continuing the story on Disney Plus. Yeah. Versus, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's probably going to be a while before we see another, after Rise of Skywalker, I, I think it's going to be a while before we see another Star Wars movie mm-hmm. that well, continues gotta, on the episodic. Yeah. They got to re-examine so. things because they keep, Force Awakens, yes, there's another a planet killing machine. Is that all you got? Is there anything else we can, <laughs> you yeah. know, Rogue One, they're getting the plans for the plan killer machine, which is okay. But yeah, the last one, you didn't have any threat like that. This new one, is the Emperor going to... He's going to be a big floating head in space that breathes lasers on people. Right, yeah. It's yeah. just like, what else do you know. got? I think I think that's what fans are upset about. Like, there's so much... All the storylines that were, you know, that were written and stuff. And then now Disney's like, we're going to give you more of the same. Yeah. Like, the whole Emperor thing. Like, I, I think it's cool. I just don't know how... Is it going to feel really, like, far-fetched? You know, like, it was my plan the whole time. Da-da-da. You know. And what the hell was Snoke? Was he just a, yeah, a follower? See, there, was so mu- there was so much speculation, like, he was Darth Plagueis. Yeah. And I thought, okay, yeah, I'll go and with that. And sure. then he just, like, up and dies in The Last Jedi. Yeah. It's like, oh, cut in half. Okay, his story's over. Yeah. Like, what the hell? They gave they gave Johnson so much creative control. I'm just surprised <laughs> they allowed him to do all that. Yeah. You know, just, like... Not probably the best move. But. I could I could almost see him being just like some arbitrary character that the Emperor had mm. influence over. Yeah. Because you never really saw... I mean, maybe I my memory on Last Jedi is fuzzy mostly because I've tried to block that from my memory. <laughs> but... Um, Billy has too. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't <laughs> really... I'll block them all from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember like seeing him use any like force powers. Yeah, just lightning. In that whole... Um, <laughs> In that whole throne scene, yeah. So I kind of think JJ's uh, overrated. I don't know. It feels like he can set things up, but he just can't finish it. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I like I like his technical aspect. Like the lightsabers felt real in this in Force Awakens. Like all the tech. Like he's really good at that. Yeah. I think writing he might not be the best. <laughs> I just I, I just hope they give it to people who who really like it moving forward. Like John Favreau is definitely like with the Mandalorian series. He's really they he's even, a huge Star Wars fan, yeah, and, and you can tell in his in that trailer, like he he's very passionate. He about loves it. practical, and I think Abrams does too. That was one thing you could tell. There was a lot of CG in Last Jedi, the candle bite scene, and then the scene at the end where they get on the uh, whatever the hell it is. BB-8 drives the the Walker thing. Oh yeah, that looked really bad. Like it did when they're riding, and you get, yeah, in candle bite when they're riding those creatures, like yeah. it just looked fake. It like, looked. It looked very Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah. To me. It's like we're honoring the uh, prequel trilogy. <laughs> I, I hope it's good, but at least the Mandalorian looks like it's going to give us something brand new and something that everyone yeah. can get behind. And maybe that'll make uh, Favreau part of making actual movies for them. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. But he's got he's got a director's team for these these shows, so I think he's good. I think he's doing the pilot. When you look at the prequels too, like. The whole reason George Lucas stepped away from Star Wars is he wasn't having fun making them anymore, and you mm-hmm. could tell that with the prequels. Mm-hmm. And we well, had help with the original trilogy. He didn't yeah. direct them all, and he—I don't think he wrote them all either. And then the prequels, he, he was like the one guy. It's yeah, just like he was like, "No, I want to do this. Like, I want to tie everything together." Like, I know it's 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 a big mess. It's 
fans, I think fans have a better idea than the creators anymore about yeah. these properties. Honestly, you know, there's, um, if you look on YouTube, there's a lot of like fan films mm -hmm. yep. that are being made out there. And, you know, people that do this on like a, a shoestring budget and come up with something that is a story 10 times better than what. Yeah you know, a yep. big director comes up with. Yeah. The, the ones in charge are putting the budget before the story. It's like, yeah, you have to have a good story and then you can bring in the special effects and all that. I don't know. Maybe JJ will surprise us. I I'm kind of happy. It's funny. Cause after force awakens, everybody was like, <laughs> no more JJ. And then after last Jedi, like bring JJ back, JJ, come back. <laughs> yeah. You can blame it all on me. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I really hope that, uh, rise of Skywalker, ties the series together yeah i do too i do too i hope it's a good end and hopefully mark hamill can do a little bit more than he did last time Which, is he yeah is he's he gonna force be a ghost it? i think oh yeah good okay yeah i wish he wasn't a force ghost but well yeah. his hand didn't disappear or his hand did disappear if you yeah look back that's true metal hand didn't remain so people were like <laughs> oh maybe he's maybe that's what the emperor is he's like a sith force ghost there you go I that could know. be something i we'll like see. wizard of oz thing yeah. Like someone's... Don't look behind the, the curtain. And it's, it's Kylo Ren, like, talking <laughs> yeah. into a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Kylo Ren's such a bitch. <laughs> he is. I want to be like my grandfather. You know, it, it's funny, because there was this... Uh, there's this little comic thing that I had on Facebook a while mm -hmm. back, and it was talking about how, like, all these actors that have been in Star Wars and every people that's... People that's been involved in Star Wars just got so sick of it. Like, Jake Lloyd was dealing with bullying for playing Anakin. Mm-hmm. The girl that was in Last Jedi. The, oh, yeah. Like, kind of Asian uh, girl. Yeah. I, I can't remember her yeah, name. Yeah, she off got top really head. badly bullied. She, yeah. yeah. So she, like, deleted her Instagram and all this stuff. And um, at the end of the comic, it says, so Kylo Ren is basically Disney pointing the finger at the audience and saying, this is you. Like, every time, <laughs> you know, something yeah. goes wrong, you throw a tantrum. And, yeah, that's true. That's and, a good point. I mean... The character of Kylo Ren could have been so much better. Yeah, it could have. A lot of mystery you building up for the, the first um, Force Awakens. Yeah. You know. And then just having him be like, nope, Luke had a, had a bad dream and almost killed him, so he went psycho. <laughs> well, uh, we'll get the Knights of Ren. That'll be nice. Yeah. Because I think they should have brought them in a long time ago. That was really... Yeah, that's kind of like something they've tried to establish with like backstories and like comic books and stuff like that. Is like the Knights of Ren were like the special forces of the first order mm -hmm. and Kylo became like the leader because of his tenacity and battle or yeah, give something. Us that. I mean, that's what we need. Hopefully this third one, I know they're going to, they're going to be in this new one. So hopefully yeah. they get in a lot of screen time. It's not just them showing up and You're like, Hey, we're here. They should and play like a musketeers thing. You know, they're all yeah. one's cocky and one's got the one's a ladies man. And one's <laughs> no one expects the first order inquisition. Charlie Sheen's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Three Musketeers is a good movie. Is that what it was called? The one they did? Three Musketeers, right? Back in the day? Yeah. It was uh, uh, Kiefer like... Sutherland, Charlie Sheen. You know what I'm talking about. You don't I know that? what you're talking no. about. I don't think you don't Charlie Sheen movie? was part of it. No. Really? Chris O'Donnell? Oh. Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. Oh, Before Batman? <laughs> yeah. One more thing Disney's doing, which is like outside of the whole... Um, Marvel and Star Wars. Uh, Jeff Goldblum's getting a show, which who, who would have thought uh, he had this big personality, you know, after all these years, he mm -hmm. kind of came back into the limelight. You know, he was in Ragnarok. It really captures the weirdness of him, but it's like entertaining weird, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Jeff, you're silly, <laughs> but I'll watch you. <laughs> He's very entertaining he is. to watch. He and is. Very he reminds you of that... Um... That kind of like weird uncle that yeah. always like you never know what he's gonna say yeah or do like Mister Rogers on acid maybe or <laughs> pretty much yeah. <laughs> what did you guys think of the trailer to that? It wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, mean, I looks intriguing. It looks pretty intriguing. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think they could have picked anyone better than Tom yeah. Hanks to portray Mister Rogers. Oh, the new movie. Yeah, yeah. Is that's... that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about the oh, Jeff just... Goldblum thing? The I'm, Jeff Goldblum I'm confused. thing. Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> No, no, I agree, though. I agree. Edit, delete. Tom Hanks can play anything. He can play rock. And then he'd get an Oscar for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the trailer to to, uh, to his new show was pretty cool. And I mean, he can't really dance very well. But yeah, it, it's, it's entertaining. And yeah, he's, it looks like he's just having fun with it. And 
Yeah, so. it, exactly. He's he's kooky and he's fun. He kind of like he just has fun with everything that he does. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's that's what's going to make it entertaining to watch. Yeah, yeah. He was really wasted in that last Jurassic Park movie. You saw that, didn't you? No. You didn't that see the latest. Was, oh wow! In Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. He was. What the hell, man? They. It's it's another classic thing with movies that I absolutely hate. What they do is they show you this trailer that gets you really excited for it, and then like. The one scene you're like on pins and needles to see the entire thing is a five second thing at the end of the movie. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, it's of course it was better than Jurassic Park three. We don't need to talk about the talking <laughs> raptors with feathers. But um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it was very wasted. It was, especially given his popularity right now. Like, yeah. which I know why that they made him center of the trailer. You know, everyone's like, oh, he's back. This is cool. Yeah. And you only get him for like just a few scenes and it doesn't really, doesn't do much. Yeah. Yeah. What a tease. Yeah. Uh, well, at least he has a show now. So we yeah. can see more of a yep. Go Bloom in action. Great talk today. Hopefully, next time we record, uh, Spider Man will be back in the MCU. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, probably so, not. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to. I, oh, I see Disney coming back more and like saying, oh, okay, you don't want 50 50? How about 60 40? <laughs> Marching up to Sony's front door wearing jack boots and, you know. That's the problem. Disney has, they're kind of overconfident, you know. They, yeah, they they're probably much take like an 85 15. You know? <laughs> How about we just buy it from you? How about that? Sound yeah. Good? I, I'm surprised that hasn't come up. I'm surprised that hasn't come up yet. I think they did offer. No, I think I read this and it could be wrong. But I think I saw a headline saying Sony will sell Spider-Man for ten billion if Dis- Disney wants him. Well, you know the funny thing is, like when when Marvel started selling off their movie rights, mm-hmm. it was when they were Bankruptcy. almost bankrupt. Yeah. Um. So they started going around to all the you know they started going around to like Sony, Paramount, mm-hmm. you know Fox. They're like, hey, we have this property. Do you want it? And they're like, sure. And then these companies started making crappy movies. And Marvel is like, oh, the rights will revert back to us. It's okay. And then, like, Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. for example, like, they literally, Fox literally um, developed a $1 million budget thing that looked like claymation and was just crappy just so they could hold on to it. So. Yeah, Canon Films did a Fantastic Four film that never uh, was in theaters. Yeah. I don't I think it was ever it. released. It was like, but was yeah, the, th- yeah. the thing looked like a Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Yeah. character from the 90s <laughs> you like foam rubber <laughs> that's pretty that's, funny it's better than him looking like discount korg though oh yeah yeah you're um, talking about the chickless the, version the new one oh no, you know, the like... newer one i guess where he's just like korg yeah he's yeah. just like cgi rocks yeah i'm like there's no real human i thought the chickless version was actually really cool yeah you just need to be bigger i think that was the thing yeah yeah need to be bigger but yeah i didn't mind that um and i think that's one of the things that the josh trank one got right and we yeah. saw that together how they made thing finally big, big and right. cg and it, it seemed to work didn't have pants on which you know it's true i still weirds people out like yeah put some pants on me <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell what's your thing What's your thing? I am the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I am the thing. <laughs> like, damn. Oh, yeah. boy. Well, great, guys. Thanks for guesting. I really appreciate it. Tell everyone about your 515 Gaming. Yeah. I have uh, signed up for this service called Extra Life. Um, what it is, is it's a, um, it's a donation-based uh, streaming service. So, um, and they, you know, none of the money goes to me. Obviously, it goes directly through the the charities and things, and it's to help children's hospitals. Great. So on November 2nd, um, they're going to be having a live streaming event. Um, it's going to be going on for 24 hours. I doubt I'll be playing for the entire 24 hours because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> um, a lot of Red Bulls. Yeah, a lot of Red Bulls, a lot of Monster, a lot of trips to the bathroom. <laughs> um, Bedpan. But um, no, the uh, they let you choose which local charity you want to give it to. So there's a children's hospital in Iowa City. That is the only one that's really partnered with them Mm -hmm. as of right now. I think uh, Blank Children's Hospital might be trying to get in on that too. Great. But it's, um, yeah, it's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like if you've ever seen like Twitch. Yeah. How like people can do donations and subscriptions and stuff like that. Um, It's going to be kind of like that. So um, I'll probably have more details on uh, the 515 gaming page uh, coming up as I kind of 
dive into it, but that's, uh, that's kind of the big thing coming up right now. Um, I'm kind of, uh, as of right now, taking a little bit of a break from doing just like the, the full on playthroughs. I've kind of been doing some little here and there videos or I'm screwing around like the Friday 13th, yeah. Friday the 13th video. That Mama's was, boy. The Mama's boy one. <laughs> that was, that was a lot of fun to make. Cause that I was, was just like, um, yeah, I, I just like to screw around with stuff like that. And yeah, you know, it, um, yeah. So that's, that's really all that's going on with that right now. Um, Great. I'll probably be trying to put up some videos today too as sure. well. So, and, uh, for anyone that's been following the status with Gunner, he's our unofficial mascot. It's my little Han Lop bunny. Oh yeah. He's doing, I want to let any, anybody know that, that actually cares, um, that, <laughs> that he's doing much better. He's recovered from his neutering. He's, uh, not mad at me anymore for <laughs> clipping off his balls. Um, I did hear that. I guess that was a dog. It's a, it's a bunny. Yeah. Oh, that's it's cool. a little, I, I've got a, um, I've got a video of him on my, on my page, just a little like that's phone sweet. video that I did, but nice. yeah, he's our unofficial mascot. I think more like a cat or a dog with the behavior and stuff. They, um, they, they have a litter box, right? They're, yeah. Yeah. So it's Which is great. It's like a cat, but um, the affection they give you is genuine, not just because they want something. Yeah. So it's like a mixture of a cat yeah, and dog. Yeah. It, it's kind of like a cat crossed with a guinea pig. I, yeah. I, I mean, if you want to. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, I like that. But yeah, I'm uh, hopefully going to be uploading a little more regularly. Right now, I'm just kind of like. You know, focusing on my on work and sure. family and stuff like that. Like my daughter just went to kindergarten. Oh boy! Yeah. So yeah, that's that's been a lot of. It's gonna go quick. A lot of fun. She'll be a sixth grader. Oh yeah my my son's uh my son's a sophomore in high school now. So oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. It's quite a bit of a gap between Holy the two crap. of them. But whoa. Yeah. Oh man, gotta love it. Um, yeah. In October, when he's fully licensed, I suggest everybody stay off the road. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you message us when wherever you guys are, so we make sure. That we oh, he he lives in Newton, so oh, okay. I mean, it won't affect anybody around this area. But, <laughs> you know, it's all. If good. You go to Newton, watch out. Yeah, there's a speedway there, so maybe yeah, it'll be okay. Hit the racetrack out there. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. Yeah, subscribe to Five One Five Gaming. It's on YouTube. Yes, and is it on Twitch as well. Uh, no, I think the other thing is kind of a similar. It's right. um, so I, I will be streaming it through YouTube. Okay, great. Um, and there will be like I'm n I'm not sure if the availability for donation yet is just for that 24 hours. I think you can do it any time. It's really. kind of like a telethon thing. Sort of. Yeah, kind of yeah, like that's cool. I think you can do it at just about any time. Like I said, I'll have more sure. details kind of upcoming on that. But um, definitely, yeah, and we'll share that on yeah. our page as well. So that's great. Billy, you got anything you want to say? Recommend? I don't do a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any Chiefs fans out there? Billy, Billy's with you. He's yeah, right. yeah, they hopefully they have a better season because you know their preseason ha hasn't been going too well. So we'll see what I'm a Bears goes. fan, so I can't I can't really say much. Um, <laughs> Bears and Chiefs this year Super Bowl or next year Super Bowl? Yeah. Yay. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can't agree. It's like Sony and Disney. We just can't agree. Yeah. We can't agree. So. Well, with that said, we'll be back. Uh, thanks again, guys, for guesting. Yep, no thanks for having us. Definitely anytime. I'm Josh. I'm Billy. And I'm Billy. <laughs> Take care. Take care.